job that he's done as chairman for the past year and Vic to congratulate you as the incoming chairman. I look forward to continuing a close and productive working relationship that I've enjoyed with the Republican governors. I understand that the theme for this year's conference is creative solutions to state problems. Well as having been one of you I can honestly say that I have first-hand knowledge of the difficult problems you face as governors and Working together, I know that we can find the solutions. Bless you. <laughs> well, I appreciate that more than I can say. We really need that. And that's a uh, grateful to all of you and uh, regarding the resolutions you've passed, uh, keeping this recovery strong of course is going to take control of federal spending and I'm very pleased to hear about that, that resolution. I hope you'll make sure your state delegations in Congress know about it. On the line item veto, I can't agree more strongly. I believe that the President of the United States should have line item authority just as most governors in this country do. I know what it did for me when, when I was a governor. And 
we start to think uh, that 1974, back here, the Congress passed what they thought was a program to uh, straighten out and get control of the budgeting process. And from 1974 until the beginning of 1982, the result of that has been $560 billion in additional national debt. I'm particularly pleased also with your resolution on education, the initiative for raising standards and improving education generally has got to come from you and from the state level and the local locality uh, communities, and I applaud your leadership. You uh, might be interested to know that I'm meeting with members of Congress today on tuition tax credits. Getting that passed is an important step that we can take at the federal level to improve education policy for the nation. Well, I know you've got a lot of work <laughs> to do, and I don't think I should take up any more of your time. So again, I just want to thank you for all you're doing. I look forward to working with you in the days ahead, and I'll say goodbye now, and God bless all of you. Well, thank you. I'll tell her, and she'll be very proud and happy to hear that. Thank you. All right. Goodbye. Thank you. Welcome back. Good job, Mr. President. Great trip. I feel like it's a lot so. persuade all of you to change your rigid thinking and support tuition tax credit. <laughs> Glad you added the word tuition. <laughs> well, I know what we're up against uh, with tomorrow, and it just, it has to be done. I, I know I don't have to tell you about the importance of this, but all the arguments that have been used against it, I think of this pure demagoguery is the National Education Association has ever produced. The, obviously, this doesn't take one penny away from the support of public education. Number two, it prevents the dumping on public education with an additional burden that uh, I don't think it's prepared to handle at the rate that parochial and independent schools <coughs> are closing uh, across the country because of their financial problems. We know that the parents are paying a double burden. It is a tax equity for them, but it's, it's even a break for the, for the independent schools <coughs> because by a virtue of a tax credit, uh, they are in a position, if they're up against it, desperate, they're in a position to raise tuition without penalizing the parents at all. Uh, so that the, uh, all the benefits that are down, are down from this, and now the, the uh, Thing that we have to do is figure out how we're going to vote closure tomorrow. And it's the most important thing I'd like to your ideas. Here we are. There may be a move for Mr. President uh, to let us go ahead and proceed with the legislation rather than have a closure vote on the motion to proceed. And then you'd be into uh, maybe a motion to table or closure on the bill or anything further. This is a real these gentlemen and I have been meeting here on the subject of tuition tax credit, which I believe comes before you tomorrow in the Senate. And the opposition to it that has presented a case of somehow that this threatens public education in any way, it does not. It does not in any way take away from the financial support of public education, but it recognizes the equity in making a provision for people who do not use the public school system, who send their children to parochial or independent <coughs> school for whatever reason, and support fully, as fully as anyone else, the public school system financially through their taxes, and at the same time pay a tuition uh, for their children going uh, to these independent schools. And 
This proposal is merely one, but up to a certain amount, allows a tax credit for a portion of their tuition to in some way balance the fact that they are supporting the two school systems. We believe in addition to this, the independent, the parochial schools in this country have offered a, a choice to the American people and at the same time uh, they have helped uh, through their very presence uh, keep up the quality of education in the schools through simple competition. We think it's the most important issue and has been too long in the, in the doing. And it's time that this break was given to those parents, the simple tax equity. We will pass. I just have folks that will pass. We're going to do our best. Thank you. We're going to do our best. Thank you, sir. That's a diversion. We would we like to feel that the principal message is that the people who are paying down the bills have a right to make a choice which way the kids go to school. That's the basic point. I'm in our meeting tonight we also. We're, uh, we're, we're very appreciative of what you're doing in the Middle East. And as a matter of fact, it was part of our discussion earlier today that, that uh, we feel that the end of the ministry is a movement that you need to make to keep balance and other restorative measures. It's just, just right. Thank you. I want to express that. Uh, we're aware that there's a lot of pressure to subject to one way or another on that matter. But uh, really, uh, one of the last things stated this morning is about that. And uh, then also, uh, we were able to, uh, to come up with a statement about uh, Central America. As you know, that continues to be a concern of the Catholic bishops. And we, once again, made the, the appeal that there be political peace overtures uh, that would uh, accompany uh, what's going on now with an effort to reduce the military presence and so on. So that was another one of our well, three fourths of our
Janice Temple. Hello there. And Dr. George Glenn. Yeah. Mr. President, Mr. Stone, Stone will present this card. I'd like to President Ronald Reagan. With gratitude for his lifetime devotion of humane causes and his sensitivity and support for Alzheimer's victims and families in the United States. Well, thank you very much. I, you deserve the plaques and love and that for all that you're all doing. But I'm very proud to have this. Well, I know we haven't found the answer yet, but I think that this effort is going to, to find it. What do you think that will be? I must say that the Alzheimer's disease has been noted in your administration more so than any other administration. And but most particularly on a bipartisan way. It's, it's a leadership bill that has been evidenced uh, in these last three years. We're just, just delighted, gratified. It's good to see you all again. To have a congressman with you. <laughs> it's almost getaway time for him. And here I am. You know, all the teachers are going to go home. I'm going to have to school all to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, I'm glad that your foreign travels were successful. Came back. Yes, I think so. Uh, mm -hmm. And one of the wonderful things was to see, and I've been there twice before, both countries, to see the feeling that is in there is now about America. Uh, besides Yankee Gold in those countries. That too is doing a good thing. Just leadership. Maybe it's those fine young men over there. I tell you, they go up there, the DMZ, the MC, volunteer military of ours and recognize that they're all there because they chose to be. But to hear about their no grouse. They they volunteer to tell you how important what they're doing is. And uh, it was just inspiring to see these young men and their, their pride, their patriotism and this free accord. I remember only ten years ago it was Kent State people were throwing rocks at men in uniform. Not these young men. They had a church service uh, outdoors. They had to wrap up in a park that was cold here on a Sunday morning and uh, had the church service. But the choir were little children from Korea, from an orphanage. And the orphanage is maintained and supported by our geologists. They contribute and they raise money and they do things like that. And they have a whole series of fines for each other uh, that they find those. So make them the fines go to the orphanage. Mm -hmm. and, but this cause is, this is one that, that's what we pray for. We're going to win it. We're going to win it. I like your sign. It can be done. That's our motto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.